Hello and welcome to our channel, Lady Ferns. I'm Tara. And I'm Angie. And we've been living in our 13-foot 1972 bowler for the last two and a half years. This is our bowler. First, we'd start with a quick tour of the outside and then we'll show you what the inside looks like. <laughs> okay, so this is our 1972 13 foot bowler. We've recently um, done a few upgrades and modifications. We've raised the, the hinge for the door because it was actually in too low of a spot, which has made a great improvement to the sturdiness of our door. And we've also replaced the door latch with the modified door latch system for camping treasures. This alone has made our door much more sturdy. We actually had it pop open in a few places like downtown Dallas, downtown New Orleans, which is quite unnerving because you don't know if you lose stuff and in a five lane highway, you don't always want to uh, be jumping out of the truck to fix the door. So this has made the door much more solid and sturdy. And we're quite happy about these recent improvements. Um, as far as the outside on this part of the bowler, we've got a 12 volt light that we've recently replaced as well because the other one, uh, the lights were all going and flickering. We kind of joked around saying it was like a seizure inducing light system. So it's much nicer to have the calm, steady flow of the light. And then down here we have a 12 volt plug in and we have got uh, two 120 sockets. So if we're plugged into shore power, we can actually run an extension cord from the outside of the bowler to various things or work outside, that kind of stuff. This is our kitchen. Uh, we have a 12, um, not 12, we've got a propane stove that we use predominantly and a few other cooking appliances, but we'll likely do a outdoor kitchen video in the near future to give you a better idea of what we use. And then we've got these two totes down here, which uh, we store all of our kitchen items in. Um, so our plates and our cups and stuff like that. This table, um, it can be quite short. So we spent a lot of time hunched over doing dishes and Tara had the wonderful idea of buying these razors from Amazon and they've been a lifesaver for our back when we're cooking and when we're um, cleaning and doing dishes, that kind of stuff. So they're, they're quite lovely. We like it. Now the table's at a much friendlier height. All right, come along to the back of the bowler. So we have these two five, 20 liter, five gallon water reservoirs that we use to haul water. There's also, I believe it's a 20 gallon uh, water reservoir inside the bowler as well. Um, we carry two propane tanks with us at all times. Um, one sometimes to heat the bowler and the other to cook with. And sometimes it just is a back as backup if we're not needing to heat the bowler. Uh, we recently got a new tire cover for the bowler. It was custom made by a lovely lady in Canada. She, her Facebook group is a bit of bowler and she did an amazing job. We're very pleased with our tire cover. Under the bowler tire cover on the frame, there is actually a two inch um, receiver where when we originally had the frame made, we thought it'd be a good idea to have that there. And then we could put like a bike mount rack there or different things. But because of weight distribution on the bowler, we just really have avoided doing that. All right, so on the side of the bowler, we'll show you a little more inside, but we've got a sink and it drains out to here. Um, and what we usually do is just drain it into this five gallon bucket. Mostly it's honestly just us washing our hands. We brush our teeth outside. We don't clean our dishes inside. We don't cook inside. So it's really just a backup if we're washing our hands inside for some reason. And most of the time the sink isn't even accessible to be honest. So we have it there as a precaution, as a backup. But here is where our intake for our water goes in. So one of these fills the, um, the water reservoir inside. And the other one actually is a direct hose hookup. So we've got two different faucets inside, which we'll show you. So that's where our water connects. And then this is the external output for our propane heater. And we put a mesh over top of it, which has actually been absolutely wonderful because wasps and bugs and spiders and everything like to go in there and make themselves a home. So if you're gonna have one, I highly recommend investing in this mesh to go over top. Our bowler is wired for 30 amp. 
as well when we've got shore power. We generally are off grid, but today when we're filming, we just happen to be at an RV park hooked up to power, so. Um, and then at the front of the bowler, we have our propane system. So propane system uh, is here with the hose and it wires inside. And the only two things it really feeds is a two burner propane stove inside and our furnace, our propane furnace. So this, we, our tanks are very mobile. We don't have them attached to the bowler at any point. Um, so we, it's nice because we can just move the propane tanks to wherever we have the kitchen table, wherever we're cooking and um, makes it really easy for filling them and stuff like that. But that's basically how our propane system works. In the front of the bowler here, we've got our custom made lock box and inside of it is actually our battery system. Uh, we've got two six volt Trojans wired in a series and then we keep like our chocks and our blocks and our extension cords and our cables and all that kind of stuff inside there and it's nice because we can lock it up. So now that we've given you a quick tour of what the outside of the bowler looks like, I'll bring you on inside and you can have a look and see what inside looks like. Come on in. Okay, so the first thing we'll talk about is the closet. There we are. Now we did all this with the intention of just camping. So there are some things that I would change. Um, this is an Ikea stand that we purchased. It isn't extremely sturdy for going down bumpy roads. We do have a lot of stuff in here. It's kind of heavy. So um, I think we want to take this out and, and redo that. But mostly keep toiletries, medicines, paperwork, that kind of stuff in here. Velcro has been kind of fun to keep stuff on the wall. All right, so this is our bed. One of the biggest challenges is that it's curved on the back side there. That's been kind of fun. And whoever's sleeping on that side has to wake the person up on the outside to get up and go to the bathroom. So, but I think, what is it, a full size? Full size is curves? Yeah, just about. And we have, I think, 11 inches of foam all together here. So it's pretty comfy. Um, we have installed gas struts underneath so that it lifts up. Maybe Angie can splice in some, some cool video of that. Um, but yeah, this is it. It's very comfortable. We've, over the years, have slept in, in other places a handful of times, and we've always found our bed is the most comfortable. So, Under the bed, there's actually two bunks. So under this side is a little cubby where we can store things. We mostly have some of our tools in there, some of our seasonal stuff that we don't use very often. And under this side, we actually have our water reservoir that I talked about earlier, which I believe is about 20 gallons. And then that pumps up to the sink here. So there's water tank, and then Tara's gonna talk about what's under this part here. And in this cubby, there is basically tools and winter supplies, things that we don't access very often. So when the bowlers were made, they were made with a dinette that kind of folded out into a bed. We decided to make it a permanent bed because we eat outside as much as we possibly can. We cook outside. Yeah, we, we don't spend a lot of time in here if we don't have to. So we'll talk about what's underneath the middle of the bed here. So this is basically our dresser. We each have three milk crates that slide out from under the bed. And we made a hook from a plunger so that we can reach the next crate and pull it out. Yeah, I think it works pretty well. There we go. There we go. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, so this is basically the kitchen of the bowler, but we don't actually utilize it as a kitchen because we do almost everything outside. On the upper part, we have these cabinets, and over the years, we've changed out what has been in here um, to work best for us. We keep looking for a different way of making and utilizing the best of the spaces. Right now, it's kind of coffees and teas, herbs and spices, oils, that kind of stuff. The main cooking things that we use most often. What keeps them from popping open while we're driving? Well, there are these old retro latches that uh, go like this and then lock in place. I believe they're used a lot in the marine world as well. These are literally the same kind of latches they used back in 1970s. They're, they're really sturdy, keep everything locked in there real nice. 
And then from here we have our sink. With our sink, we have this old board that we used to be used in a different RV sink that Tara repurposed. She cut a notch out of it and it fits perfectly and it kind of gives us a little more uh, counter space. There is two faucets. This one here is connected to the direct line of water. So if we're parked at an RV spot or somewhere with a hose and it's connected to the boiler, pushing this down will bring us a steady continuous stream of water. Um, and this faucet here is connected to the water pump that we talked about that was under the bed. And it's a hand pump mechanism. So you, um, you pump the water out from there. So that's really nice. And we all really honestly ever use those, the sink and the pumps for washing our hands, maybe filling a cup of water, but oh, we don't even do that. Filling the Berkey, I suppose. Um, Pet anyways. water a lot of the time. Yeah. So in hindsight, would I have had a sink if I redid this? That's questionable. We actually probably would have preferred the counter space. And here we have our Berkey. Our Berkey is our water filtration system. This is what we use to filter all the water that we obtain, whether it be from an RV park, from a lake, from a river, um, a truck stop, wherever, city park water, wherever we gain water, we filter everything through our Berkey to keep us nice and safe. Here we have our two burner propane stove. This is what I was talking about on the outside, which pipes into the inside. This, I don't know if I would do again either, honestly, but it's great to have in emergency kind of cases. We generally don't cook anything inside. We do all of our cooking outside. We've only used it a small handful of times and it's generally been in like freezing cold Canadian winters, which was like two years ago when we, we lived in the boiler. Uh, and we would basically boil our water and add it to some kind of like backpackers dehydrated meal and eat that way or to make a warm cup of coffee or tea. Yeah, we don't we don't use it very often, so it'd almost be nice just to have all counter space. These light switches here actually control little pock lights that I repurposed from IKEA, and they uh, with a certain type of wiring. I forget all the details, but basically they work on a 12 volt system. We have had moisture issues, so some of the lights are a little compromised right now. So it's one of the upgrades we'll be doing in the near future is putting new um, puck lights, probably IKEA ones up there again. This is our thermostat and our thermostat controls our propane slash 12 volt heater. Um, I forget the make and model of it. I think it's Atwoods, but the thing works absolutely wonderful. It heats up this whole entire bowler in like a matter of seconds. Keeps us nice and toasty warm. And yes, we do have a propane uh, detector and we also have a smoke alarm and, and carbon monoxide detector as well for safety and we do keep good ventilation and airflow as well for extra safety precautions because there is dangers to having a propane heating system and then from there we've got our little um, 120 bar fridge 120 volt power bar fridge when we originally did the bowler we had different intentions in mind. We were just going to extend our camping season into the fall and spring. We weren't building it with the purpose of living nomadically in it at the time. So, and we're rarely ever plugged into shore power. So mostly that's just used as extra storage space. We did however put a baby latch on it, baby gate latch, safety latch or whatever. So that prevents it from popping open. We tend to take this bowler pretty off grid down some pretty bumpy roads. So anything that keeps everything nice and tight and closed is always really a big asset in here. And yeah, so that's, that's that part of the bowler. One thing we forgot to mention while we were over here, <laughs> speaking of ventilation is we installed this Sirocco fan and it is absolutely amazing. I've been looking for a good fan to use in the bowler for a long time and this thing is wonderful. It's got three different speeds, it can be set on a timer and with the right adjustments it can face just about any way you want. So this way, that way, that way, like you could really angle it just about anywhere you want it in the bowler and we've done it so it can go this way to the front, it can face just me in the bed or just Tara on the bed. I highly recommend this fan and it uses, I think it's like 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 amps per hour, 
So it's super energy efficient as well. And the nice thing is it locks into place. So fold it up, lock it into place, and it's not, not going anywhere. So. Yeah. As far as power goes, uh, we do have two 120 um, outlets here uh, for when we're plugged into shore power. And as well as we have some 12 volt things on the side, either side of this uh, cabinet tree. So they're really handy to have because most of the time all we have is the 12 volt system. So we have those USBs and everything else. And we also have this one here, which we've recently installed. And this one here is a lot more designed for our fridge system, which we'll get to here shortly in the video. Okay, so this is the front bunk of the bowler. And originally in bowlers, this was made for bunk bed system. And the ledge is where the bunk bed would kind of balance on with poles to go in the front. This is how we use it. Um, it's mostly for Stella. This is her bed. She loves to be in her kennel at night. Um, it does have storage underneath the bunk here, so there are two wooden uh, lids that pop up. There's one here and there's one on the other side as well. We mostly just use it for storage. As you can see, we need more storage space. So we did purchase an upper cabinet system from Scamp, which we plan on installing and um, plan on doing a video on as well. Um, we keep solar panels on this side. They are kind of delicate, so we try to keep them here so they don't get smashed. And all my knitting, camera equipment, laptop, and fire extinguisher. So in the summertime when it's really hot outside we usually keep our refrigerator on the bunk here and the air conditioner um, where the jackery panels are. And then Stella's kennel will usually either be in the floor here which takes up basically the entire dance floor or we let her sleep in the floor. Um, she's still trying to get used to Benny so that's been kind of fun to deal with. <laughs> They're still becoming friends. Yeah. So we're working on that but yeah, so this is how we're using it through the winter, and so far it's working, um, short of needing a little more storage space, but yeah, it's been good. So we also, on the restoration of the bowler, installed a 12-volt fan. This is a fantastic fan or fantastic vent, depending on what you call it, and it's really great because if you open a window here, for example, and then a window on the other side, it creates this amazing cross breeze where it sucks air in and sucks air out. It's amazing for smells and odors or just creating a nice airflow as well. And now with the addition of this Sirocco fan, it's absolutely amazing. Anyways, when I wired it, it was really nice. I went between the grooves here and fed it through here, through the cabinet. And then the wires come down, the wires come down the pipe and then into the cabinet and then to the rest of the wiring of the bowler. So recently we decided to try making some Reflectix to help um, keep it more insulated inside here, keep it warmer. Um, so we're trying them out. They seem to be working okay. We just did Velcro on the Reflectix and then Velcro on the window. Um, works pretty well. There's still moisture that gets behind the Reflectix. We're still working on that. I think it probably needs to be a solid piece of Velcro all the way around. Uh, we're still having a little bit of issue with the Velcro sticking to the window itself, so sometimes it peels off with the Reflectix. But I think it's a great idea, and I think they look pretty good. I personally think it keeps in a lot of heat. I think it does, yeah. Being the one who usually lot. sleeps closest to the window, I think it does a great job of yeah. adding warmth. We're not letting the cool air come in through the windows. And it's nice for privacy. It keeps a lot of light out. It'd be really dark in here at night when we're trying to sleep because sometimes we might be near a lamppost or whatever. So it does help with that as well. Yeah, and she's made one for every single window. So it's actually pretty neat because if you put every single one on all the windows and you turn on the lights and it's dark outside, you actually have no idea anybody's in here with lights. Yes, blurry. I would like to attempt making one for the for the fan. Just then it'd be a complete blackout. Yeah. Yeah. So by now you're probably wondering where do we keep our refrigerated cold foods? We don't have any. Don't have any? <laughs> well, that's news to me. <laughs> 
Uh, we will show you. Like Tara said, sometimes it's inside the bowler, but when it's not, we actually keep it in the back of the truck. Come along with us. Okay, so currently this is how we have things set up. Um, we have, this is where we keep our dog food, and this is where we keep our cat food. We've tried many different ways. We've had big bags spill over into the bowler where we've been traveling. We've had to have concerns about rodents and pests and raccoons and bears and you name it. So these airtight, Loctite containers in the truck basically is the best option we've found so far and we love it. So that's where the animals have their food. So this is the fridge system that we are using. After about a year and a half living off grid, dealing with ice, coolers, ice melting, ruining our food. We just were like, if we're gonna keep living this way, we need to invest in a fridge. So we got a 120 slash 12 volt fridge from ARB and we absolutely love it. It's the 101 quart ARB zero fridge. Let's show you it. So it has two compartments and they light up when you open them up. And this is where we keep our refrigerated goods. It runs on 120 and 12 volt power. So right now we're in our V park. So we just have this extension cord running straight to the pole. So most of the time though, we are off grid and we don't have a place to plug in to shore power. So when we do, we run it off of one of our two batteries. The nice thing about the fridge is it has the option of running off 12 volt or 120. So this is the Dometic PLB40. And when we use this one, it's a 12 volt only option. And it comes with this nice two pin locking 12 volt cord, which we really like. So once it's plugged in, it actually locks into place. So when you're driving down bumpy roads, the cord doesn't ever pop out. It never pops out. So it can be really nice to keep it powered. And then we also use the Jackery. And the Jackery has the option for us for 12 volt. And it also has the 120 option. So this is how we keep the fridge powered at all times. And then we basically power the fridge with these two batteries, alternating them basically on whichever one has the most power. Um, it's, it's a really great option. The fridge may seem like it's really large, but the nice thing is it holds a lot of food. So it's not unheard of a, for us to find a place that we absolutely love way out in the mountains, stay there for two weeks and then come back into town. It saves us from having to come back and forth every two to four days for ice or every five to six days for food. We can stock up on pet food and our food. And as long as we've got enough propane or gas for the generator or sun for the solars, we can stay out for weeks at a time. So it's, it's absolutely wonderful. We, uh, we love our fridge. We uh, couldn't imagine still doing this with a cooler system and ice. The other thing to note about this fridge is that it's actually a fridge freezer. So it's got two compartments and you can set one or the other or both to be either a fridge freezer, free freezer fridge, or freezer freezer, or fridge fridge. Does that make sense? So it, either or compartment can be either or fridge or freezer. So we could, in theory, stock up on meat, freeze it on the one side and have the other side for fresh produce. And then as we eat the meat, we could then change the freezer into a fridge for the last bit of it. So it's a really handy fridge. We absolutely love it. The rest of our stuff is generally stored in the truck. The canopy is a new addition as of probably about eight months ago. The tonal cover just didn't give us enough space. We do carry around with us the Honda EU 2200i. It's an absolutely wonderful generator. Uh, it gives us the option to charge things up with 120. Um, the nice thing about it too, it has a really low decibel rating, which is nice for to have a quiet generator, but there's a lots of talks about um, state parks, public parks, um, provincial parks, wherever you are, starting to implement a decibel limit. So if you've got a really loud generator, it's quite possible that in the near future, you won't be able to run it because your generator will be deemed too loud. So this one is on the very low side of sound, of decibels, so it's something for the foreseeable future, we shouldn't have an issue with running during generator hours. Thank you so much for joining us on our bowler tour. I hope you enjoyed it. We plan to do some changes and upgrades in the near future. In particular, we're going to see if some scamp parts fit into the bowler. So please stay tuned for more videos to come. Talk to you soon. Bye.
<laughs> Hello and welcome to Stella. Shh. She wants to introduce the video. She does. Apparently. <laughs> Hello and welcome to our channel, The Lady Ferns. <laughs> you can't laugh, you're making me laugh. <laughs> and then we have extra protein tank. We carry two protein tanks with the pro <laughs> protein. Hello and welcome to our channel, Lady Ferns. That was Tara. She's nervous. And I'm Angie. Who's not nervous about anything. So now that we've given you a quick tour of the outside of the bowler, let's have a take ha let's go have a take a look. I don't know if I can do this. <clears throat> Alright, let's go I don't know if I can. Honestly, I'm getting like sick and sweaty. <laughs> it's horrible feeling. <laughs> Stella being a brat. Hey! She wants free. Don't you chew on your leaf. <laughs> Do I have to be in it? Different renditions of this. It's looked many different. T looked. It's, <laughs> it's looked. <laughs> okay, so welcome to the hub of the bowler, which is the dinette. I'm not dinette, the kitchen. <laughs> really great because a lot of the times we'll supply up with animal, f cat f animal food. Well, thank you for joining us on our bowler tour. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> thank you for joining. <laughs>